Hello. Um, before I started my video on the Risk OS text editor that I wanted to try and write, I wanted to try a couple of little experiments out first. Um, so this is one of the ones I wanted to try and look at. Um, so under Risk OS, it seems like if you have an actual an error box come up, it seems to be modal effectively for the entire um, desktop. And I don't really want that to be the case in my application. I'd rather be that if I had an error box come up, um, then maybe it would freeze my application, but it would allow you to use the rest of the desktop if you absolutely had to. For example, let's say you spelt a file name wrong. You wouldn't want to have to um, freeze the desktop while you, you could go and look the file name up. I don't know, something like that. Um, so I wrote, just to prove that that was still the case, I wrote a little test app by basically copying from um, this guy, Steve Fry. It's left, uh, left quite a useful um, C WIMP programming guide on the internet, um, on his website, address is there. And I've effectively, just to try this out, I've completely cloned his um, his report error message uh, function that he's written here, just to prove that if I if I wrote an error box in the way that um, it's recommended, it is actually modal for the system. So let's try that out. So I wrote a little test application. Um, this is the source code for it. So as you can see, it's basically just um, all right. It's in a CPP file, but it is effectively exactly the same as um, Steve's code. So when I actually run it, which all it should do is generate an error box. You see, you can't actually get the mouse cursor outside of the box until you've responded to it. Um, that's okay. I think, I think that's kind of okay at like a top level error handler or like a real fatal error that needs to be dealt with. But I don't want my main application to be able to freeze the desktop every time something funny goes wrong that isn't critical. So what I want to, what I want to try and do is see if I can Essentially, I also want to use exceptions because I'm going to use C++. Um, and what I want to try and do is see if I can build a, essentially, my own version of this error box that um, that just repeatedly pulls the WIMP, allows the remainder of the desktop to keep operating, but effectively is modal for my application and doesn't return from that error box until we've clicked one of the buttons. So I thought it'd be an interesting thing to try and try out in the space of like an hour or so. So yeah, see if I can do that. So I might be getting the wrong end of the stick here, but I think all that we need to do is to replicate the WIMP error box or maybe even make our own like custom error window. And effectively inside the function that opens the window, we need to have our own miniature polling loop. And we want our poll loop to just respond to messages that are targeted directly at items within that window and nothing else in the application. But as long as we're polling in there, hopefully that kind of um, allows the rest of the desktop to operate. I might be under some, obviously I'm new to this, I might be under some crazy misconception as to why this doesn't work. So be interesting to find out. I might be able to get this to work, but maybe somebody a bit more experienced can tell me why it's a terrible idea. I don't know. So uh, just thinking about it, what's the most basic program that we could possibly make that would be a proof of concept for this? I suppose that would be uh, maybe an application that opens a window. The window's like a generic window. Maybe it's got some, it must have some sort of button or something that can do something. So maybe we could have a button that incremented a number on a label or something, something that we can do. And then another button that when, when you click on that, it generates the effective E a window has been shown modal effectively, um, which will be our error box. And then once that window is open, we shouldn't be able to click on the button on the earlier window and increment the um, counter because it shouldn't be responding to any messages. I think that's what we want. So what do we need to do then? We need to build a really simplistic program that opens two windows, applies a couple of buttons and responds to messages but try and keep it as simple as possible. Maybe not even bother with an icon on the icon bar. Yeah, I think that'll do. Let's give that a go. Yeah, I've just made like a really basic template folder just to store it in. Um, uh, that's the make file that I copied from before, but I've got no files in there. I thought we'd try and build it up as, as we go, just as a proof of concept sort of thing. I suppose actually, um, as we're only doing a proof of concept and we're not really interested in like the code behind the window handling or anything like that, we could actually use RiskOS's um, templates. They have a mechanism of um, predefining a, a window layout rather than doing it programmatically. 
sort of using like a, almost like an IDE sort of window designer. We could use that to develop design our error box and our main window, just because it's the quickest way of getting to a working test program. It's probably worth a go. So yeah, let's see if I can find the template editor. I think it's called WinEd. I haven't used this for years though. So programming utils WinEd. There we go. Right. So let's try this then. I'll try and see if I can remember how to do this. Right, so we created a new template file. Let's call it it's gonna to have to be in the run image folder. So let's call it save templates. Chuck it in there. No templates to save, alright, fine, sod you then. <sighs> what? Oh, brilliant. Let's create a new template. We want to create two windows, and each of those windows should be an item inside this template file. So we we'll create a new window. We'll call this, I don't know, um, main window. I don't know what the, um, I don't know what the etiquette for, for formatting name for it should be for windows. Create. Huh. Brilliant. That's twice I tried doing this and it didn't work. Quit. Well, that's bloody brilliant, that is. Well, we're going to not run WinEd ed then, because that's bloody useless. Okay, programming. What have we got? Is there something else? I thought it was a different template editor, Utils. Temple Ed. Let's try that one instead, shall we? I used to use, I, I used this Dr. Wimp a fair bit when I was a kid, but um, I haven't used that for years. Okay, let's see if this works. Create. This is going to be a window. We'll call this main window. Well, that's a good start. <laughs> okay, so we've got some features then. Window can be expanded. Well, actually, I suppose that's probably enough, isn't it? If I can redraw the window and move it around, that probably means it's responding to messages. Um... You know what, we'll put a couple of buttons on there. Right, so I guess we've got some sort of tool. Let's call it Edit Title. Let's, I don't know, let's make that main window. Uh, I guess a, do, do, do we want anything like that? Oh, that's okay, so update and exit. So we've got a window title. Work area, we can change the size of the window, but I'm not worried about that. Let's do edit window, what does that allow us to do? Oh, that changes whether it's movable, all this sort of stuff. I think we'll leave that as it is for that mid window. Work area, where's the old um, buttons and stuff like that? Create icon. There we go, we've got an icon palette. So what do we want? We want two buttons, one to do something, Oh, actually, I'll tell, tell you what, I suppose that's as good as anything, isn't it? If we had some sort of counter and up and down button, we could probably put one of those on there. How do I actually, how do I grab that and chuck that on? Can I, how do I get that on my screen, on my window? Moving and resizing an icon. To move an icon or a selection, click inside the window with select while holding down the shift key. So can I hold, can I go like this? Shift. Ah, there we go. So shift, to click that. Oh, still got that selected. Okay. Uh, Okay. Okay. Clear selection. I'll just selection. Delete. I want that. That. I want those, don't I? Shift. Drag. Okay. And then click on that. Shift. Drag. Okay. All right, we got we got what we want on there. It's not exactly beautiful. I don't care. All right, it's this hard work as enough as it is. So let's modify icon three. 
Let's edit it and we'll say, I don't know, generate error. Update and exit. Oh, no, that's, uh, that's not, how do we resize this then? On three, edit. Maximum size 15, is that the characters? <sighs> size 15, let's make that, let's try 30. No. It's so hard. Moving and resizing icons. Let's try this then. <laughs> to move not to resize an icon or a selection, sh click on it with Shift Adjust. A rubber box is started, allowing you to move one side. Shift Adjust is the right button. That's moving it. Shift Adjust. There we go. Okay. And this one is uh, this one is icon number three. This one is two, one, zero. So zero is the text box. That's actually icon zero, edit that, let's change the default text to just being a number. Oh, we've got some sort of validation on there. So it's a, uh, okay, so it's some sort of string saying it can only accept numbers, characters from A0 to nine with a dot and a minus. Can I do this? Can I get rid of that? Update, change it to just has zero. Update. Actually, it doesn't even matter what we type in there, does it? But don't mind. Okay, update and exit. Okay. Shove this down here. All right. Well, that would do for our main window. It's not exactly beautiful, but I've got a button I can press. And uh, we've got some controls that we can operate to modify the state of the window. Okay, close that. Let's actually make sure I save this file, shall we? Because I haven't saved the templates file. So let's do save templates. And then we'll create a new window for our error window. And I'll make it kind just for the right, just for now. We'll make it kind of looking like the right thing. I've actually got that open on this window, so so I think we want it roughly that size, a bit smaller. And we'll make we'll do edit window. So we'll call the title. Um, so this one says message from error test. So if I make that message from uh, test error test application, something like that. I'm not going to do any validation on the title name. Uh, let's see if we can make this. Oh, this is the title bar. We don't want to update the title. Uh, that's all we want on the title bar. Then we want to edit the window itself, don't we? So, edit window. Button type never because it's not a clickable window. Movable, auto redraw, no bounds, back window, pane, update. Doesn't seem to have made any difference. Uh, keep on screen, maybe that's a good idea. We'll get rid of the scroll bar. Get rid of the 
adjust button at the bottom, get rid of the horizontal scroll, get rid of the toggle button. In fact, we don't want any of these buttons, do we? We don't want a, we want a title bar, but we don't want close, we don't want back. Um, no scroll events, ignore extent. I don't think we need to worry about that. Um, update. There we go. That looks, that looks kind of like the real thing. Uh, let's make the title foreground, title background. Let's make that yellow because it's always, we want it to always seem, well, I suppose it's got the input focus. You know what? Actually, it would be good to be able to, we don't want to permanently make it suggest it's got the focus because um, it's not going to have the focus all the time. Okay, update and exit. So we've got, we've got a little box. We need to plonk an icon there. I guess this, presumably this is an actual sprite. Let's try copying that there. Right click, icon zero, edit, sprite. There we go. What do we have there? We had application, didn't we? Update and exit. I think that was over here somewhere. And then we also had the little eye icon. Bear with me a sec. There we go. Information. That's the icon that's underneath. So, well, I suppose we could put error, couldn't we? Error would be more appropriate. Let's put error for the icon name. Okay. Minimize that. So we'll do a new icon. Drag that, chuck that there. I'm going to do edit, and that is error. Take an exit. Okay, then we want some sort of message. Just going to go there. We're going to do shift, right click, to drag the length of it out. Um, let's edit that. We want the background colour to be the same as the colour of the window. Uh, button type never. Say, say test error. I'm not going to do any. I'm not really going to. I might. I might replace this, but we're just doing a proof of concept here, aren't we? Um, horizontal center, shaded tough size, blah, 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 I don't need that. There we go, that's just because it was selected. This is a test error. She needs to go. Like that. Okay, we had some sort of line across there. I guess that's one of these frame things, is it? <laughs> Not sure about that. Maybe that is how it is. It looks like it goes off the page. So hang on, let's just um, let's re just edit the window. Put put the scrolls bars back on. Um, adjust. Update and exit. Pull that out a bit. Move that up and out of the way, drag that up, drag that down, move the window back over the top, go back to edit the window and turn the scrolling back off. <laughs> there you go. And then the last thing we had was um we'll just chuck an OK button on there. It doesn't have doesn't really have to be anything too special. So that was like this. Uh 
Okay. I don't think we need to do anything with this. We just need to respond to our message. Uh, well, I suppose we could make the um, could modify the strings if we wanted to. We're not we're not, not really trying to actually write an error handling window. We're just trying to prove to see whether it will actually work. Okay. Uh, in that case, close window. Save. And then we can close the template edit. Oh no, actually maybe we need to keep that open because we need a reference for the, what the um, buttons are. So we can close that. We'll keep the template window open because we'll need the icon numbers. But we've got the template written so we can get rid of that. And then we can have a look at trying to write a little quick application that opens those two windows and then we'll try and see if we can write it to open one as a modal. Oh, it's a few hours later and I finally hacked myself together a, a really basic test program. So basically what I've done is I've just kept it as simple as possible, mostly ripped off of um, Steve Fryatt's um, tutorials. Um, yeah, so what we've got is we've got our main function, we're just creating our task, ending the task, creating a window uh, from the template for the main window. I'm not doing anything with the error handling window at the moment. Just And then I open the window start the main polling loop and then after the polling loop completes I delete the windows, close the template, shut down. Um, in this function here which is about creating the window from the template, um, there's something a bit funny about this. When you have to lo um, allocate some memory both for a window definition because you don't know how big that's going to be until you load in the template. But you also have to generate this area, uh, allocate this area called indirected data and I don't know how long that has to persist for. All the example code I've seen, it's um, obviously a C code, and I've used C++ kind of. Then that data's malloced, but I don't find it freed anywhere. So is that data supposed to persist for the duration of the application? I'm not entirely sure. I feel like it is. Because um, I know you have, like, for example, on this I've got indirected... Um, data buffer for the text box on my window and I'm presuming it gets dumped in here but is that one lot of indirected data for each for each instance of the window I'm not entirely sure I really I'm really not sure what that's about so for the moment I'm allocating it but I don't know what the effect of a effectively that's a memory leak and I don't know whether that persists after the application ends hopefully not um, okay and then we load the template um, from the window definition, create the window, return the window handle, uh, and then I just um, basically whole stale copied this code about how to open the window and make sure it's centered on the screen, um, but only make sure it's centered on the screen if it wasn't previously open. Um, and then what have we got? We've got uh, a main polling loop, and I've just got according to WIMP poll like usual, but the reason code this time we've got. Uh, we reuse that existing open window function, close the window for closing the window. So that should worry about redrawing the window if you move it around. And then when it comes to clicking the mouse at the moment, I'll just check whether it's the left hand mouse button select. And then we say, is it if it's the down arrow, then we increment the counter. If it's the up arrow, sorry, we decrement the counter. If it's the up arrow, we increment it and then set the value of the icon text. It's all a bit crap, really, but. The idea is just to give me something I can play around with, so I'll close that and actually run it. Now we can move our window around. Um, we can press down and it does some you know, some interaction with the buttons I can see happening. I can also got it set up to auto redraw the windows. And then when I click this button, then we'll try and generate our modal window, which I'll hopefully write in a slightly um, better fashion. Right, so uh, next day I've just played around with it a little bit more. I've taken out the reference to the um, loading the error window from this uh, main function here so it's just loading the main window and then in the actual button click section I've added this extra bit in here I probably should change this to a switch statement or something terrible but um so I've added in um, this bit here to check if you click in the button then we're going to create an error window so I've created a really basic type for that um, called error window pass in the name of the window so it looks it up from the template file and then I've made this little method so called show OK, which should be our sort of modal function. It should return what the button is. 
and then made a little enum which declares um, names to the button. So if we say if it hits the OK button, it should set the icon text to this but, uh, value. If not, it hits it. Uh, should set it to that. So this is the class definition for. I've just made like a really simple class to contain the operation of the error window. So I've made it called it error window. Got a little enum with an OK and cancel button. But at the moment I've only got OK, haven't I? Um, so then we've got a particular single constructor. I could do this again with an overload the constructor and actually construct it um, without using the templates programmatically. Um, got a destructor as well. Uh, I'll make it virtual in case we wanted to overload this, but I don't know if we want to. Uh, sorry, inherit from this class. Then I've got the one method show OK. I've got um, the window handle, which I just stored as an unsigned because I don't like having all these, um, I don't really want the oslib uh, types inside the header files. And then I've got, I've also, because I wasn't sure about where the data for the indirected buffer, uh, sorry, indirected data memory was stored, I've kind of appended it to the error window object. So the lifetime of that data buffer should also be the lifetime of the object. So there's our sort of template class, but at the moment I haven't implemented any of the code for it at the moment. So just simply in the constructor, because I want to make sure, I just wanted this um, window handle to be const, probably didn't have to be, but. Um, I wanted to make sure that, that window handle wasn't initialized. Sorry, that that window handle is initialized at the time the constructor is called, and to do that, it has to call effectively a non-member function. So to do that, so this load window temp, uh, template window is effectively going to load in the template like we did in our um, main file, um, but also passing in the window buffer as well as a um, reference to a vector. And then in the destructor, we're going to effectively call the equivalent of the closed window. But what I want to do is in this file, I mean, I, I don't know how long this, I don't know if we'll keep this or not, but um, I, I kind of quite like the idea of the error window code being completely encapsulated in itself and not having to rely on anything else. So maybe it would only use oslib or oslib or whatever, but um, I, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. If, I'm not sure. I'm not made my mind up, but. I like the idea of this error window being a completely enclosed piece of code that doesn't rely on anything else. There's no sort of coupling with anything, any other sort of event handling or anything like that. So we might keep it really simple. I don't know. I might bend this off. Who knows? Who knows? I mean, it, it does, it's not really using. Uh, it's not really good from a sort of code reuse point of view. But I don't know. Not sure. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, I'll see if we can code this up. So what I thought we might do. Um, in this load template window, um, actually, I'll tell you what. That's what we want to do is effectively copy and C plus plus up a little bit. Um, Steve Fryatt's um, code for loading templates, but this time we want to make sure we use. But yeah, really, we want to use the um, the X version of the software interrupts that actually return error codes. So let's have a little think. We're after. Uh, actually, I'll put it up on my other window on my PC. So, templates. Okay, yeah. So I think this is what we want to we want to base our code on. So right at the bottom, he's written a function. This code here for loading our template. So I'll virtually copy that. Oh, can I, I wonder if I can select this. Control Shift V. Ah, there we go. Okay. So, oh, yeah. I really hate that. I really hate that because I don't know how to undo that. Okay. Went window, window definition pointer. Is equal to null byte indirect data. Oh, okay, right. So we need to we need to dig this about a bit to make it use our types. Uh, all right, we need our include files in this one. So what do we need? We're going to need um, to. Oh, we're going to have to do hash include. Let's We're going to definitely need. Oh, let's lib slash wimp dot h 
we're probably going to need a slib. Let me just check. I guess we need the whatever the OS error is. It's going to be OS.h. That's quite useful to being able to, sh this shift switch in between windows is really good, I like that. That's probably my favorite feature about this app, app actually. So that's Steve's code, rejigged a little bit. So what we're going to do, we need a, we still need a WIMP window pointer to our window definition. Where are we, where are we actually going to get that? So again, so what do we need at this point? We need X WIMP load template. Right, let's see what we actually got then. So, so we're returning an OS error structure pointer. Presumably that's a struct, yeah, which is. Um, an error number and a message. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, so we've got in our parameters, we've got a win window object. Or wimp get right. Okay, so if we pass in wimp get size, which is what Steve's doing here, it will return them. Yeah, because what you have to do is you have to call the load template function twice. First time it tells you how big your buffers need to be. Then you need to allocate memory for the buffer and then it will and then call it again with that memory allocated the first time you need to know what size everything is so um window is going to be a pointer to a buffer of the template but this time we're going to send wimp get size which is what steve's done next parameter is data um and end Data and end is that the oh I think that must be the start of your data buffer to receive data and the end of the data buffer. We could look at the Risk OS programmer's reference manual, can we? Request size syntax. There we go. That's why that make any sense. Right, R zero is zero to find the required buffer size, and I think if you look at Steve's um, code. Well, actually, I think if you search for WIMP get size, it is actually defi hash defined as zero. And then R2 pointed to workspace for indirected data, but presumably, so Steve's put in zeros there. So presumably, because you because you don't you're not actually allocating any memory at this point, you don't have a workspace. That should be fine, I'm guessing, as being zero. So as points to memory blocks used to return the template data, if it, it is vital to know that enough memory is set aside, the space required to return a window definition is 88 bytes and a further 32 bytes for each icon further memory is used to contain any indirect data this may be useful uh, to identify how much memory is required to load a template before actually loading it with a load syntax form of the score am I not in the yeah okay pointer to workspace so, okay so I think that can be null Pointer to end a workspace plus one byte. I think that could be null as well. So I think that's what Steve's doing. So we've got zero for our get size. Let's make those null. Which oh, could be null pointer. Old C++ null. Right, okay. Uh, oh god, uh, back, back. Um, we want. I've forgotten what I'm looking at now. <laughs> Dear me, God. Come on, bring it to the front. Pointer to 250. No, do you know what? I've completely forgotten what I'm looking at. I'll have to go back there. So we've got no, no, and then we've got wimp no fonts. Back, back. Point 
pointer to 256 byte array for a font reference or minus one for no fonts. Right, so if we go to load template, um, we've got byte font reference. I bet if we, um, I bet if we go back to the definitions, it's defined as OF, so minus one. Okay, so the next thing we've got in is name. So name is actually going to be our win window name that we got there. Now I've got a feeling that the bloody type of this is, I've got a feeling that the type of that is just a char star and not const char star name. I mean, yeah, we, unless you, um, you're not going to write that, so that should definitely be a const really, but we're going to have to const cast that away, I think. Uh, we should have bit pants. So the variable is window name. I think we're going to have to do uh, const cast oh. and that's going to have to be as a char star window name and then the next parameter we've got zero in there context okay so we've got this context which is set to zero so what does it actually say context is in here pointer to wildcard name Well, that can't be it. Point to wildcard name to match. Must be 12. Mm, okay, I didn't get that. What's context? Position to search from, perhaps? Or zero for the first call? Not sure. Maybe it's position to search from, context, and then context out is maybe the position of the next one to search from. I don't know what the one is. I guess it's window, is it? Maybe? Then we've got some outputs which are the window definition size, the indirected data size and then the context out again. So I'm going to change these names slightly like that. Window definition size the indirected data size window Definition size indirected data size context out again. So, um, what we should do is we should throw an exception there, shouldn't we? We should say if the error is not null. Hence we're seeing for the moment, so we should say throw exception with message from error. This is OS error, isn't it? So that's going to be error dot error message. Uh, and then we want a separate message for the context so if context context is zero this, needs to, this wants to throw its own exception doesn't it throw exception so if context is zero what does that say then it's no other there's no window in there in the load template I don't understand what that would take well let's have a look at the um the Swede description from Let's go us open, save that. I don't understand what this context is at the moment. Uh, any thoughts on what the context is? Be useful if you could um, drop a hint in, just in the um, comments, that'd be really useful. <laughs> mm -hmm. Don't know exactly what a context of zero is telling you. So I'm for an exception there, but I don't know exactly what the context is. So I'm not hugely happy about that. But I normally don't call C. I normally wrap C, um, C functions with some sort of error handle. Do you know what we could do that, couldn't we? Void. Check for. 
bonus. And if we take a OS, no, not a const, OS error pointer, const error. And we could say, ah, oh, I guess there's error codes though, isn't there? Maybe we want an exception type that's got an error code in it. So we want some sort of throw some sort of exception that possibly includes error code data. Do you want that? Or maybe I could just append it to the string, couldn't I? Actually, no, well, that's not what we want, is it? We want to say if um, if error is not equal null, yeah, so error, if error is not, um, yeah, error. So it must return some address of a block if it's not, if there's no error. Okay, so we could do check for errors then. Just replace all of this. Simplifies this a little bit, doesn't it? Because it just marshal it into an exception. So we can bin this one. Uh, shift X. Delete that, but we still want to test the context and then for an exception separately if that doesn't work. I think that's what we want, and we don't need this OS error anymore. Oh, now we don't need this block either, do we? <laughs> so now we've got a window definition size. These two we don't need just yet, do we? Okay, let's comment those out for a minute because we don't need them. Then in. Oh, so we cut that one down a bit. Wimp load template, a uh, cool load template request. Yeah, that's a useful comment that being in there. All right, allocate memory and then verify it was available. Okay, so window def, we'll call this, we'll rename this window definition. So we'll make this Wimp. Ah, right, okay, so we know what the size is, don't we? So I what, what I did before is just, um, because a window definition only has to last as long as this function. So that could go out of scope. So we could use a vector to allocate the memory for that. So we could do standard vector, just make it in bytes or something, unsigned uh, char. And we could call this window definition buffer. The size of that to be initialized to so you can initialize that to reserve a particular size and we're going to make that window definition size okay and then we can make our window we can make our window definition which is a wimp window we could do wimp window pointer const so the pointer can't change window definition is equal to so that's going to be the first element in window definition oh, buffer so that's going to be window definition buffer element zero so the first point in there is going to be the address of it and then it's going to complain so those types don't match up, so we need to cast it. So we need to reinterpret cast. So we cast one type of a pointer to another. So we're going to cast a um, unsigned char star pointer, unsigned char pointer to a wimp window pointer. And wrap that in the brackets. There we go. So now we don't have to worry about freeing our window definition buffer because it will just go out when it goes out of scope 
if it well we don't have to worry about any of this bit for the um, window definition because of that won't need to be freed um, so we can bin that um, if it doesn't allocate the memory it will just throw an exception and propagate back out the function so we could do that then the same thing we want is we've got our indirected data so we can delete these lines I think can't we X. Uh, so we want our indirected data. So if you do, what is indirect? I can't remember what that was. You know what? I can't remember what indirected data was. What was it? It's um, oh, it's just a char star pointer anyway. So that's unsigned char pointer const indirect data is equal to right so we're passing our indirected data buffer in because it's part of the object so we can bin this malic stuff right yeah that's what we want to do we actually want to reserve the data so we want indirected data buffer dot reserve and then that's going to be indirected data size so we've allocated the memory for it, and now we want to do what we did here with our reinterpret cast shizzle. Copy that. Paste. This time the address is the indirected data buffer. Okay, and then that should go out of scope. Well, if the constructor for if this constructor doesn't um, work it throws an exception that will go out of scope and get released anyway otherwise it will go out of scope when the window gets deleted which is what we want so we don't have to do any of this testing if indirect oh, that's interesting he's saying if the window definition is null so that didn't get allocated fine but it's also saying if the indirected size is greater than zero so it could say that the, the size could be zero in which case I guess you could still reserve zero is that that's, let me just check that's not in undefined behavior doesn't look like it's a problem. So I guess that should be fine being zero. Okay, so I think in that case, we can get rid of all of this. Delete. That simplifies that bit, doesn't it? So now we're down to only, a we've only got a few lines there for that bit now. Okay, so next stage then. Now we're going to reload, recall, load template to actually load the template into memory. Now we've actually allocated the data for it. Okay, well, we can do our check for errors and get rid of this um, testing for the error stuff, can't we? So, watch that. Check for errors. Wraps that function call. Cool. Okay, then we can delete this, checking the error is not null. You know what, we don't have to do any of this. All we have to do is throw one exception if it if um, context equals zero. So we don't have to do any freeing of data buffers because they're now handled by REII. So we just have to do, oh, control shift X, throw exception, and we'll make our set make the same statement don't know exactly what a context of zero is telling us yet okay right so let's go through the parameters then so we've got our window definition Window definition. Then we got our indirected data. So, oh, the bloody indirected data is, is that? A, that's a char star. Do you know what? I've made this reinterpret cast wrong here. That should be it. Right. Okay. Let's make. Right. Well, that can't be an unsigned char star. So that can be a char star. We're keeping the bloody const. <laughs> That actually that const should be alright because that co that const is the value that's inside the pointer, not where the pointer points at. So that const should be fine going as a parameter. I shouldn't need to cast that away, hopefully, because that will be copied into the receiving 
um, parameter in the function, so that should be right. But what, but this does need to be a char star. Okay, so we should be able to get rid of this. Now that's going to be in directed data. Maybe I'll make this a bit verbose. Char star cont. So we're casting the. So we're doing a point bit of pointer addition there. Um, we could make that a separate line actually, couldn't we? We could say um, char. Oh, that's a const char star. Okay, so we can make that a const char star const. And we could call this indirected data end. End equals indirected data plus indirected data size. That should be all right. I don't think, don't think we even need a casting on that. So that can be can be indirected data end. So we want no fonts again. Then we also want the name of the window that we're loading in. So that's window name. Oh, we're gonna have to const bloody cast that one away again. Ugh. My my theory make everything make everything const unless it absolutely doesn't have to be, and then anyone else who uses your code never has to do any const casting away because it's right. The interface is right. So next, okay. So after the window name, our next argument we got zero. So that's going to be another context, presumably. Let's have a look at um, the strong help. So we had our name, and then there we go. So we've got our context again. I still don't really know what that is. And then we've got three outputs, which are used, data used, context out, position of next entry, or zero of template not found. That must be, ah, that's the context, isn't it? Position of next entry, or zero of template not found. So if we can go back, actually, we know that must be context. So context must mean template not found. Uh, not found. For exception, we'll tell you what we do. We'll do template um, window name not found. This is a fatal error, isn't it? But this is for like a programmer's error rather than a um, system error, isn't it? So this is more like a fatal error. That should go. This should probably should be logged in some sort of error log, but not necessarily presented to the user because it doesn't necessarily help them out. Uh, so we probably should do some sort. Of, I mean, in like a text editor program, that's not a lot of use to the person who's using the text editor. So you'd have to think about that a bit. I'd have to have a different category of exception for that. Uh, right. So we've got a window name. So there's our context. In, then we got null, null, context out. So what are two nulls? I've forgotten what they were again already. Save. Used, data used. Pointer to remain in workspace. I guess we don't need that. Template name returned in block. I guess we don't need that either. If an error does occur when trying to load a template, it is advisable to call when close template and close the template. Well, we can do that with our RAI. If we throw an exception, then we should be able to catch that and then close the template at the top level. No errors are generated if the template could not be found in this instance. R6 is simply set to zero. So actually, in some instances, it might you might just be scanning what's inside a template file, but might not be a problem with it. Okay, so I think that, that looks good. So now we've got our window definition. Um, so, so the way Steve's written that in his, um, let's go, actually let's go to that again. Okay, so going back to this code from Steve Fryatt. 
So he separated his concerns. He's got one job, which is loading a window template into a definition. So he's created a window definition, then he can create windows from that definition. But in this instance, I'm only going to load, uh, create one instance of a window. So I'm going to couple the window, loading the window definition in and creating the window from the window definition. We've got our window definition and there, so which he populates by loading the template. Checks it's not null, but we won't have to worry about that because we're doing our exceptions. And then it just locates the position for the window on the screen. And actually calls window, wimp create window. And presumably then after that we can open it as well. So, uh, so I guess we could just clone that quickly, couldn't we? So I noticed that actually, the, yeah, see the window definition can go out of context, uh, sorry, can go out of scope and be freed but the indirected data kind of just hangs about. So we want this clone this bit. Uh, selection, copy the clipboard. Okay, so we've got our window definition. So we can shove this there. Don't need any of that, do we? Shift X. Uh, bin that. I think we just want to do. Oh, we need. Is there a, isn't there an X wimp create window we probably want, don't we? Right, we want. Handle. We want uh, wimp W. Window handle equals X wimp create window. And it'd be window. Definition. So is there an X wimp create window? Let's have a look. Return turns an OS error. Now it's two parameters. One of which is an out parameter. There we go. So we don't want it like this. We want to create a window handle. We we'll say unsigned. There, yeah, this is actually returning. We're returning an unsigned, aren't we? So let's do an unsigned no handle equals zero. So we'll initialize that. Then we want to do our check for errors. Check for errors, which we can use to wrap our X wimp calls. Then we've got our window definition. The pointer, and then we need the address of window handle. But we need window handle needs to be a wimp w, so we're gonna to have to cast that. So that's gonna be have to be a reinterpret cast. So cast it to a wimp w pointer from a from an unsigned. And then that's what we want to return. We want to return our window handle, don't we? Assuming this all went through without throwing any exceptions. If we had any exceptions, hopefully we've released all the memory that's been allocated. And if we have an exception inside this function, which is only called inside the constructor, it should release some memory for the window. So I'm hoping that's all right. And then we're going to do return, win whoop, return window handle. Okay. Is that going to work? I, s I bloody doubt it. <laughs> I don't think we need to this comment anymore. We say allocate the memory, I don't know, for the buffers or something. But we don't need to check that it's available because the exception handling will deal with it for us. The question is, was it actually build? I have no idea. What have I done wrong? It's bound to be something. Okay, well, we got that bit to build. Doesn't really do anything though, I suspect. But, well, I suppose we might get a window, uh, might get a wimp error if there's something really tragic going on. So um, let's quickly see if we can, let's pin that. Let's actually run the application. That's built. 
One, two, three, four, five. Sorry, five, four, three, two, one. That what was that telling us? I can't even remember what I put in there. Five, four, three, two, one. Main. So we're getting an okay, uh, a narrow window colon colon OK button call from five, four, three, two, one. So that means it's created the error window object. Must have been a well, presumably it loaded the um, template, but we didn't throw an exception, so we don't really know. But yeah, they actually called that method show OK, which at the moment is just returning OK. But so that's good, 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 good. OK, uh, what do we want to do now then? So we want to populate our, so we created we created our window. We want, we've, I think the next method to deal with is a destructor, isn't it? So that is effectively doing the load and it's copying it into our window. So I've effectively um, made a helper function. Oh, see, that's just this bloody annoying up there. I made a helper function to do the window template loading so that window handle could be a console, it didn't really matter. But now what we want to do is delete our window from the WIMP. And I'm guessing that's just going to be something along the lines of X WIMP delete window. And it just takes one parameter, which is our window handle. Back here in our destructor. Well, we don't need this comment because it's going to be fairly self-explanatory. So. so we're going to do check for errors because we still want... Ooh. Ooh. There's a good bloody question. You definitely don't want to throw an exception from a destructor. You know what? We're just going to ignore any error. Right, we're going to say, uh, don't check check for errors from delete window method because uh, we don't want to throw in a destructor for now. So what I always used to, uh, well, what we used to do in my last place. If we had any exceptions that were thrown in the destructor, we had um, we had like a system log that we have running, and what we would do is uh, write a message to the system log um, saying that an error had occurred, and effectively we'd have to quash the um, the exception. Really, you could trigger effectively you'd set some sort of state somewhere else, which would tell your system to trigger a shutdown. Which but we're not going to do anything with it, so we're going to cast the output to void for the moment, and but we're still going to call x wimp delete window right and the type it's expecting was a wimp w isn't it was a handle so we actually want to do a static cast to a wimp w and that is our m underscore window handle so our window should get deleted as it goes out of scope so do you know what i'm going to comment this out for a second because we won't see our window unless I write the whole program, which I don't want to do just yet. So let's comment that out for the moment. And um, in our show method, let's just quickly do an open window. So save that. Um, so back in our main, did a, we actually wrote some functions here to do to get the position of the window. I'm kind of gonna to have to copy these again which is a bit pants because I don't really know any other way of doing it. So we start, I mean that really should go into its own library but again I wanted that error class to be self-contained. Yeah I don't like it but okay if we shove this down here. Maybe I can make these static. Ah, right, here we go. So we've got uh, OS read mode variables. So that's probably an, probably a X version of those, isn't there? So we'd have to do an error test on those. But we've still got the same four parameters. Uh, mode. 
I'll have to see if I can maybe do this at 1080p. This is so difficult with such a small window. I don't know how I used to cope with a bloody uh, VGA monitor back in the day. Right, so we've got the mode, which is what's mode. Next one's the what's mode variable, which sounds right. We've got the output variable, and then we've got bits PSR. Don't know what that is. We're going to have to look this up on RiskOS. Uh, open again, aren't we? So, so we've got... Yeah, where's the where's the X version? So the only examples you can find of that are in are in source code files or code snippets. This is gonna be so slow. It's alphabetic index of Swedes. The C flag is set if variable or mode numbers were invalid. I don't know what that bit's PSR is. Is that is that the um, processor processor bits being set? I don't know, but I don't I don't think I understand that at the moment, so I'm gonna have to ignore it. Okay, we're not gonna be able to do any error handling on that. This is what's so hard work. I mean, things like this are such hard work. So we've got a comment in there. Prefer X sweet but don't understand the additional parameter. Right, error window, error window. So we need to do, just change these names to these methods. Error, window, window. If we do error window un underscore open window. Uh, open window. We want M. Oh, we want a car static cast our handle to a wimp W M underscore window handle. Okay, right. Let's say that again. So shift task window make. And uh, we got a bit of a mistake. Invalid static cast from unsigned int to wimp w. You know what? I can cast that to a const wimp w, can't I? That will work. Cast that to a const wimp w. No, it still didn't like it. What's wrong with that thing? Oh, it's a pointer, is it? Okay, that's going to have to be a reinterpret cast then. I thought WIMP W was just a number. I don't really understand why that is a pointer, to be honest. If it's just a handle. Okay, let's see what we got then. Run. So we get a window, and it doesn't do anything, but it does open. So the window opens, opens bang in the middle as predicted. So now we need to do our own little poll loop in here, don't we, to process the messages from that particular window. Um, is that, and then, we, then we're pretty much done, we just need to return whatever button that's clicked. So we need to, let's, do you know what, let's steal our poll loop that we have from before. We'll call this, I don't know, wimp void. Uh, poll loop. Uh, what do we want to do, we want to return from the poll loop once somebody's clicked the button. Poll loop. Until button clicked. I don't quite know what I'm going to need just yet. Probably a window handle. Definitely a window handle. So we have a corn swim W window handle. And then we'll just figure out what icons we clicked on. So what we're going to do is we just want to steal all this, really, don't we? Ah, right, so we need this to be an XWIMP poll, don't we? So we can throw an exception if something doesn't go right. Uh, okay, so what have we got? We've got four, three arguments and an output. So in this instance, we've got one, two, three, four, five. So that's one, two three 
and their reason code. Okay, right. So this time we want the we just want to wrap. We want our reason code to be passed by reference at the end. So we call that and reason code. And this time we're going to wrap this with a check for errors. Very object oriented, but we could keep a switch statement in there. I suppose that's okay. If we get a message quit, what do we want to do if we get a quit? I don't really want it to be an exception message. Hmm, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, oh, I'll just put it. You know what, for now, for now, I'm going to put a comment in there saying, I'm not sure how to address this message. Now, maybe, maybe it is acceptable to just um, quit the message box. So I was thinking maybe it's uh, if you get a message, uh, an order to quit from the task manager. Uh, but it kills the message box, but then leaves the application open. They can do it again, so it's not a big disaster. I don't know how that fits in with the usability sort of point of view. There's no resizing or anything like that. So then we've got a mouse click. So what we want to do is we want to say that if our, I guess we just want to. Re uh, what have we got? We've got um, wimp mouse click, uh, wimp block, is it wimp pointer, mouse status, click select. So we're testing for select being clicked. I think that also we have to do, I mean, we could put in this as well. I think it has to deal with some key bindings as well, but I don't think I'll worry about that just yet. Um, so it's going to tell us what our icon is, isn't it? And as long as it's not between window, as long as it's not between window and iconize, and it's not zero, then we can return it. It's not right. Zero is valid, isn't it? So it just wants to, whatever the lowest one of this is, FFFFF2U should be fine, shouldn't it? So I could actually say, could say if that's, I mean, we could make it some arbitrary value. I mean, we're not going to have more than a thousand buttons on it, are we? So we could make that less than, let's, uh, let's see. Const int, uh, is it an int? I guess it's unsigned. Signed max button number equals arbitrarily hundred. Okay, so as long as that number is less than max button number, what do we want to do? We want to close the window and return the button number. So we want to do. do, 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 do. I guess we want to whip. Oh, we want to check for errors. Wimp close window. X wimp close it window. Has that got any different parameters in it? One parameter. X wimp close window. One argument. So that's going to be the handle of the window. Which is going to be. Oh, I need to change these main win handle things. They're going to be window handle, aren't they? So. Close the window and then uh, static cast. Is it? Oh, this is returning an in or an unsigned in. It's an in. I think we want that to be an unsigned in, don't we? Wimp block dot 
pointer.i. Now we might want to use some sort of full through for that if we're doing key testing as well, but for the moment let's try that. Test if this actually happens. <laughs> we shouldn't get a window close request, but maybe it does. You know what? I don't think that I don't think that makes any sense. We're gonna comment that out. Don't think we should get that message. We're still gonna get a quit message. Not sure the right way to deal with that right now. Um poll loop until button is click, so check for the error, still went poll in a while running condition, which is always gonna be true now. So that could just be well true. So we've got our open window. So we want to jump into our poll loop. We've got const unsigned icon equals um, icon clicked equals. It's going to need to be another reinterpret cast, isn't it? Reinterpret cast. Wimp. T. No, it went W. And no handle. So it returns our icon, and then what we need to do is figure out, based on the design of the template, which icon is it. And I think that this is going to be. Let's open the template editor. Get our error window. And that's icon 4. If. Icon clicked equals four. Turn our OK button. Uh, throw here. Actually, let's flip it round. If icon clicked is not equal to four, and it's somehow returned. should return the OK button, because there's only one button. I should say, throw an exception here, invalid icon returned. All right, what do we reckon then? We, we must be close to being able to run something now. Free save, Let's see if it builds. Too many arguments to the WIMP poll. In file, error CPP, too many arguments. Ah, oh, it's because I haven't changed that to an X wimp poll. Save. What was the other errors? 130, error running not declared in this scope. Yeah, make it deliberately goofy number. Should be a request to exit exception, but that's not really an exception, is it? Is it? It's not really exceptional circumstances. Don't know, I have to have a think about that, but I'm going to leave it for the moment. Bollocks of it. <laughs> we'll just make it look like an OK. But then that might make it do something, might not it? Oh, yeah. Well, an OK button's just an acknowledgement, isn't it? Well, we're going to leave it like that for the moment. OK, sod it. Mm, let's try this again. Oh, what have we got? Oh, 136 and 150. Okay, we've got a running program. Let's have a look then. But hopefully, this will do what we want. Run. So the button's up and down, working. And then we're going to hit generate an error. Can't do anything with that window. Can move that one around. Can't do anything with this. Not responding to any messages. The button clicks, but it does nothing. Because the, the desktop should still be working, so I should be able to open, for example, the web browser. Which I can. But this application has frozen. 
a sign from the error box. But then I hit OK, and then I'll get one, two, three, four, five. So uh, there we go. That's working. That's working the way I expected. I think we need a bit of refinement on this design. I mean, this kind of works. But... <laughs> it's something you could chuck in as a component, though. So as soon as you make things components, then you can always play about how you work them without making too much of a drastic change. If I call that or invoke, I mean, that's got well. One of the problems with this is I feel like this we've got one object containing an error window. You're only ever going to have one error up at once. I hope. So there's an argument to make that some sort of singleton. I'm not hugely keen on that. I don't want to make it a static object because I mean I don't know what I don't know what the situation is with multi-threading on Risk OS. I know it's a, effectively a single threaded operating system and I know the Unix lib has some sort of provisions in it for simulating threads using timers. But, but I don't want to... I mean, I suppose at the moment it doesn't really matter, but it's something you could paint yourself into a corner with fairly soon if you don't think about it. So I think we've got what we want then. So we've got a, at the moment we've got a class which has got a couple of methods in it. We've, in this instance we've instantiated the class and we load it, with, which is a bit messy if we do it more, more than once, we're actually loading and the template from memory every time. Probably don't need to do that. Probably only need to load it once. But we could I mean it does mean we could potentially make multiple error message boxes. Uh, but I don't know why you'd want that necessarily. Um, but yeah, so that can be moved around so you can look at something but you can't operate the remainder of the application until you've responded until the error. Oh by the way, oh that's one thing I haven't done. I haven't changed the text. That's a good point. I haven't changed the text of that icon. Let's do that. We open the window. Before we open the window, we need to change the text of that icon to be. Um, oh, we need to find out what that icon is, don't we? So let's say, let's go. Const unsigned. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Okay, icon on equals four. Go back to our error window. That is icon two. So we want to change the text of icon two. Icon equals two. So we've got a string, but we want to copy that in. There might be some. There might be some issues with um, formatting on that actually. I suppose we can leave that to the caller to leave new lines in there. Maybe that works. I don't know if it does work. New lines, maybe. Um, I guess so. Okay, um, what do we want then? We want to, oh, how did we, we did that before, didn't we, right into, a, right into an icon. So there was a function in here which was set icon text. And I'm using indirected data. Oh, am I? I hope so. Indirected, yes. Sake. So we've got a window handle, the icon number, and the text. That should be it. So we just need to set that in our template as what well, how long that message can be. Might have to set it to be multi-line. Right, um, okay, so we want to do this then, don't we? Oh, I'm gonna make that static as well. Here, I want to rename that first. Set label text, window handle. That's going to be that's another reinterpret cost. A wimp eye. is that bloody does that need a reinterpret cast as well or a static cast so I don't want to do this is why I don't want to do C style casts even though it would make life easier because at least I know 
what's happening. Icon number, that's going to be message label icon. And then message. Task window, make SM print F not declared in escape. I don't really want to use yes, uh, I suppose so. Cannot convert WIMP T to WIMP W for argument one. I'll oh, bloody type WIMP T. If you're a donut. Standard I O. This is a test mess arc. Perfect. Let's modify this error window label. And drag the end out. I wonder if I can make it multi line. Oh, I suppose I don't really care that much. Uh, maximum size, let's make that 50, 80. 80 is a good number. Let's put test error backslash in. Hello. No, that didn't work. <laughs> Save that. Let's see what happens this time. This is a test message. That's exactly what it already said, isn't it? Oh no, this is a test error. There we go, it's different then. Okay, hey. Okay. All right, I think we're there. I'm going to knock it on the end for today. That was an interesting little exercise. A few things to like think about. Just a, something easy to try and get stuck in, playing around with um, a little bit of the wimp. Trying something out that I wanted to implement in my own applications. Oh, oh dear, what have I done now? Oh, bloody hell. Well, that's not good. I don't know how I managed that. <laughs> From how I've closed everything, I don't know what happened. Sod it, don't even care. Right, okay. Well, yeah, like I said, that was a... Yeah, an interesting little play around. I have to try and... Um, I don't know. I need to think about it. I don't want like, an exception hierarchy, but I'm going to have to try and think about how we organise it. There's a lot of things to try and think about, really. Might try, but anyway, I'll get some more experiments to try, and then we'll have a go at actually um, starting out on the test e text editor. So, thanks very much for watching. I know this is a bit of a weird video. Um, take it easy. <laughs> See you later.